Hi, this is Andrew Koss at Terminus Recording Studios in New York City. In this video, I'm going to show you just a few of the many musical uses of the Placid Audio Copperphone mic. This beautiful and instantly recognizable microphone has really found a special place in our mic collection, and we continue to find new ways to use it all the time. While it makes for a great effect on its own, what happens when it's blended in with other signals is pure magic. The Copperphone is a uniquely designed microphone that operates within a limited range. Its frequency response ranges from 200 Hz on the lows to 3K on the highs. So you don't get the lows nor the highs. Well, what do you get? It's an incredibly warm and perhaps nostalgic quality. You might think of an AM radio, a record player, or even a telephone. Yet it does something that simple filtering or modeling can't. This is achieved through the use of vintage telecommunications components and the microphone's internal design. You see, the mic's element is rear-ported into a hollow resonant chamber. As sound passes through the diaphragm, upper mid-range frequencies are accentuated, while low and highs are reduced. Well, let's take a listen to it. First, here's the copper phone combined with a vintage Neumann U47 on the body of our grand piano. Here's the 47. Phone. It's a pretty cool effect on its own, but now let's listen to them together and I'll bring the copper phone in and out a bit so you can hear how they interact. It's just instant character. I'd also like to point out that the copper phone really responds to its source differently. Let me zoom in here and show you. Notice how the copper phone's waveform really looks nothing like the 47. And I think in a lot of ways this makes things like cancellation a lot less of an issue and almost creates a musical use for phasing. Next let's look at some drums. We took the copper phone and the U47 and placed them several feet away from our drum kit. Let's take a listen to how that sounded. Here's the 47. And the copper phone. And together. In this next version, we decided to take the copper phone and try to push it a bit, so we ran it through a compressor and just really squashed it. So here it is through a distressor, just pulverized. Here's the 47 for reference. and them together. You could really have fun with this thing on drums. And again, let me zoom in here and show you just how different they look. Next, we did some electric guitars. We placed a Royer 122 and a Sennheiser 421 along with the copper phone on our Bogner Shiva guitar amp. Using a clean signal, here's how the 451 and the Royer sounded. And the copper phone. Such a cool guitar effect. But now let's listen to them together.
And now with a distorted signal, here's the 451 in Royer. And the copper phone. And all together. Seriously, it brings out a really cool vintage quality to that. And just in case you'd like to hear it, here's how the phase sounds flipped. Now, the Sennheiser 421 and the Royer 122 have pretty different sonic qualities. They even have different polar patterns. But when you zoom in close, you can see the waveforms look fairly similar, and you can check your phase and alignment. Meanwhile, the copper phone's really just kind of doing its own thing, and I suspect this is part of the reason why it sounds so good when you blend it in with other mics. The next test we did was on acoustic guitars. We took a AKG 414 and a 451, and then we added the copper phone. The 414 and the copper phone were both on the body of the guitar, and the 451 was up on the neck. Here's how the 414 and the 451 sounded. And the copper phone. Let's hear them all together. It really adds such a sweet characteristic to the sound of that acoustic guitar. And you know, the 414 and 451 really weren't very close to each other. And the 414 was an omni, and the 451 is super directional. But you can still see the relationship between their waveforms, and it's still obvious they were recorded in the same source, despite their distance. But meanwhile, the copper phone's really responding to that same sound source very differently. Alright, now let's check out the copper phone on a vocal. In this example, we had the singer do a lower harmony with the intention of creating a kind of creepy, haunting background effect, which the copper phone does extremely well. So here's the actual lead vocal line that the singer performed. Then I'm trampoline, but I am not afraid. And here's the copper phone with her harmony part. Then I'm trampoline, but I am not afraid. You love me when I could love myself. And then just for fun, we added a bit more filtering and some sound toys crystallizer to give it a really kind of haunting background effect. Then I'm trembling, but I am not afraid. You love me when I could love myself. And here are some larger backgrounds. There's a bunch of tracks that she did just using a blue bottle, and then we added simply two extras with the copper phone. <laughs> and her singing through the copper phone sounded like this.
And when you hear them all at once... And here's it again, and I'll bring it down a little bit. So you can see the copper phone there in backgrounds really add some bite to them. The Placid Audio Copper Phone can add texture and color to your recordings that you just couldn't get using processing or effects. It's become an essential mic in our collection, and I hope this video gives you some insight into how we use it and what the guys at Placid Audio are all about.